What happened at your work which caused multiple people to all quit at once? They laid off half the company with no warning. This included a gentleman who was less than a year from retirement and had been there for 35 plus years. The company was shocked when half the remaining people abandoned ship shortly thereafter. At previous and final employer they did a round of layoffs. Now this is Europe. So you need a reason to fire people with a contract. And they said it was for economic reasons. So naturally, like rats on a ship, a massive exodus began. Everyone was looking for a new job. Management didn't expect this. So a month and a half later, they released their Christmas speech, calling for fresh young talent, and asking people to stick together like family when they fired 30 people just 6 weeks ago. Come January, the second wave of the exodus was well underway. This one happened mid-January, it got really awkward when they tried calling back the people that they'd laid off to replace the people who had left. Ha, huh. so you come crawling back you cheap sack of shit Frank Reynolds. The owner died and his idiot son took over and decided that the company didn't make him enough money and started to implement cost cutting measures like turning off the account in the building. Let me guess, two people are working on this, why not use one person for half the cost? Why not just use half a person at a quarter the cost? Turned out our owner was keeping the social security money taken from our paychecks. And yes, he was caught. You can pull that scam for about 4 to 5 years. Really insane the lack of communication between the I's and S's. Restructure of the way we are paid. What I used to do involved about 40% client interaction. 20% team slash coworker interaction and 40% paperwork and case coordination stuff. Based on what we do that means only 40% of the time is technically billable, and there are really sticky rules for what is and isn't billable. So, logically, we were being paid on a salary model. Q management saying we can only make money for the time we have that is actually billable. Semicolon. One fourth of the department quit. Two of us on the same day. Wait, why is paperwork and case coordination not billable? It's the healthcare field. Only direct client contact can be billed to insurance. So what would happen if you simply didn't do the other 60%? Lots of bad things. If it's not documented, it didn't happen. Lots of lawsuits. The company consistently outpaced competing firms and found itself emerging as one of the industry leading agencies. This was also a California tech firm. So shorts, flip flops, beers at lunch, getting high on the roof were all rather common but we were rapidly growing and the atmosphere slash location made us a hot ticket for talent anyway cfo and cmo cashed out and the ceo decided to totally remodel the company by making it far more corporate on top of all of this they implemented unattainable goals and removed our work from home policy the final straw was they removed our rather generous vacation policy and replaced it with unlimited vacation which was a facade for you can take as much vacation as you want if we approve it like one fourth of the company quit and immediately landed at better jobs also profit tanked our company is doing incredible let's change everything task failed successfully anytime i've seen a mass exodus it was because of poor management i've never seen it organized just a bunch of employees independently deciding to quit in the same month because the management was so bad yeah that's the case on nine times out of ten people don't leave jobs they leave shitty bosses when i was 16 i worked in the concession stand at a minor league baseball stadium minimum wage at the time was five dollars and fifteen cents slash hr this job paid eight dollars and it was always in the evenings so it was perfect work for a high school student the only bad thing was our management was terrible the main manager would throw todd tantrums about once a shift over stupid bullshit like not ordering enough of a specific beer she did the ordering or running out of pre-cut lemons for tea one night the stadium was running a promotion and it was incredibly busy easily two three x the normal volume of customers we were all working our asses off handling multiple roles each with absolutely no downtime although we all cleaned as we worked Nobody had a chance to do thorough cleaning for the whole shift because of the never-ending horde of hungry baseball fans. The manager showed up three to four hours late per usual and throws the biggest fucking tantrum ever over the unswept floor. Finally, she announces listen up you lazy fucks. Minimal work gets minimal pay. Everybody is being paid minimum wage tonight because you slobs won't clean up anything. Both of our bartenders and the bar back quit on the spot, which caused a chain reaction. We all took off our aprons and hats to leave, 
she blocked the exit, and was red in the face from screaming. So one of the cooks climbed out of one of the big serving windows where we served customers. So I did the same and most of the staff followed. Bear in mind, that this all happened in front of like 200 plus customers. Of course. My final paycheck got lost so I had to file a wage theft complaint with the Texas Workforce Commission. How'd that wage theft complaint go down? Sounds like it'd be super satisfying, just to slip the envelope into the litter box. Filed the complaint. Submitted my clock in and clock out receipts for the week. We got paid weekly and previous pay stubs to verify my pay rate. After like 3 weeks, I was contacted by the person handling my claim that my previous employer had mailed me a check for the whole amount I was owed plus a penalty. The check arrived within a few days. The penalty was $25 I Ike. Later that year, the same employer refused to provide my W-2 for tax filing, so I filed a complaint with the eyes and used my pay stubs with a special form to complete my taxes. I don't know what happened regarding that, but that lady's life imploded for non-work related reasons. She got caught cheating on her husband, then got caught faking cancer for sympathy. Nice. New management. In a month. Four kitchen staff quit, leaving me to be the only original kitchen staff hire from the previous manager. She completely changed the vibe of the workplace. No one was happy. No one felt like talking or listening to music or being friendly. It was robotic. Why is it so hard to get rid of a bad work culture, but so easy to create one? I used to work at a McDonald's. And we had a terrible manager who hated a lot of people working there. Everyone else hated him too. But no one wanted to call him out on his shit and quit. I was the first to do it. Because I requested two weeks off in August of that year. About three months in advance. My family likes to plan our summer vacations early on. When August came around he had my schedule set up for all of August off except for those specific two weeks. There was no way that he could have misinterpreted my request. When I got my schedule, I stormed into the restaurant, called him out on everything, and then quit on the spot. About two weeks after that, I heard from one of my work friends that five other people had enough and quit as well. I kind of felt good to be the first. What makes a good manager at these types of places is recognizing that 95% of their minimum wage employees could go get an equal paying job on their lunch break and start that day. Your store isn't special. The only personal management you have to do as a GM is to make them want to work there. Do just enough to motivate them to make your store successful and then spend the rest of your energy making it a place they want to work. Make them happy and they'll naturally become better employees. I was working for a very large IT company. Before the tech bubble burst we had a meeting with our new director and the VP. They were tired of people complaining about things that should be changed at the job and how they managed people. So they sat around 200 of us down in our auditorium. And the director said she didn't want to hear any more complaints on how she was running things. And if we didn't like then there was the door and that there was no way we'd leave such a great job. Well there was a mass exodus and probably close to 50 people left within 2 months. She and the VP were reorged and given zero reports. They were gone after a round of layoffs happened shortly after. I thought you were gonna say that it happened on the spot. Like she said in a rhetorical way, if you don't like it then there's the door. And then to her shock the entire auditorium stands up and files out. I'm gonna pretend that's what happened because it's funnier. I read 50 people left within 2 minutes lol. Owners retired. They were literally the greatest people, both very sweet, but kept the place running like a well-oiled machine. They took pretty good care of us and their restaurant. When they left, they gave the restaurant over to their nephew who at the time was a busboy slash waiter. Kind of stand fish. Didn't really interact with us too much. A bit lazy at times, but for the most part did his shit and went home. He seemed okay, until he got the power of being the owner. He fired four people, including two of the four cooks, and two of the three dishwashers. Literally that same day, on a Friday night just before the dinner rush, all because he back quote didn't like their attitude, he refused to allow people to take vacation that they'd already requested and gotten confirmed by the original owners, would change the schedule randomly without telling anyone, and then scream at people when they missed a shift, or came in late because of it. He'd refuse to replenish the kitchen, until we were literally already out of things, then take forever to put in the orders, he showed up randomly, and would drink at the bar. For free of course, because he was the owner, and then bring in all his buddies to drink with him. Together they'd get way out of hand and grab at women, and try to start fights. Within the first month of him being the owner, over half the staff had quit. 
usually walking out literally in the middle of their shifts. After being screamed at, they basically throw down their aprons and tell everyone else that they were so sorry, but they couldn't do it anymore. After the last cook, this big dude who usually kept the kitchen laughing and running at a decent pace, started crying in the middle of his shift and dropped everything he was doing after the boss came and yelled at him for being too slow and making back quote slop, then walked out the rest of us just bailed along with him. Four months later the place was closed. His aunt and uncle were absolutely furious and devastated that he'd run the business they'd built up for over 30 years into the ground. That's really sad, but sounds like a poor decision on the old owners, who put someone in a busboy position to such a high position without training and evaluation. If they knew they were retiring they should have begun to train him, so he would be ready to take over, and if they would have realized he was ill-sweeted then they could have found someone to take over instead. I realized I forgot to add that one of the four people he fired initially was the senior manager who was supposed to show him what they hadn't, but being their nephew he did do extra stuff and they showed him what he should have been doing whenever they were there. Officially though his job was just being the bus boy or waiter for a few years before this was decided, but on the whole yeah, they should not have just up and left to retire without giving him a few months in training wheels to make sure he could actually hack it. None of us thought he'd be like that though, when they reached out to try and find out what had happened. they moved out of state, they were absolutely horrified to hear how he behaved towards the staff, but by that point it was too late to do anything about it. What an asshole though, literally handed him a functioning stable business, all he had to do was just fuck all and let the employees keep doing their thing and he's set for life, instead he just fucked it all into the ground and now has nothing. Being lazy is one thing, but he had to go ahead and be abusive too. I did landscape construction. The cheap ass owner kept taking bigger and bigger projects, while never hiring more help. We were all overwhelmed, stressed, and anxious as hell. One of our foremen quit, and I followed suit a few days later. Two more guys quit the next day. He was down to three guys for the obscene amount of work he wanted to do. Of course everything gets way behind schedule, but he's convinced it's not his fault at all. He went out of business less than a year later. I was hired by the new owners to replace the existing manager. I was under the impression that he was moving on to another job somewhere. So after about 4 days I ask him where he's headed and if he's excited. He just looks blankly at me and says I'm not going anywhere. I'm just training you as the assistant manager, right? The look I gave him must have been a great tip off because he got up and walked into one of the new owner's offices. After about 30 seconds they were screaming at each other. Then he just storms out of the office, grabs his stuff give me the finger, and leaves. Over the next few days I'm trying to calm things with the employees. They are not faulting me, but now have a very bad taste in their mouths about the new ownership. Over about a 7 to 10 day time period my team shrank from 15 people down to 3. I hobbled along with that the best I could while we tried to hire new people, but the new owners were offering so little we had trouble finding people. After 3 months or so of that I started to get fed up and overwhelmed and when the owners started to get on me about missed deadlines I had had it, we were still only at 5 people, 2 of which were brand new and still training. They didn't allow me to refuse work or push deadlines out. They expected the same output as a 15 person team. So after my third day in a row of being berated for missing a deadline that was impossible to make, I quit. Hiring you to replace him without telling him is evil. Hiring you to replace him without telling you they haven't told him is dumb. At that point, there isn't much to do except try to make the best of it. But I'm glad you were able to get out of there. Hiring you to replace him without telling you they haven't told him is dumb. Somehow management that expects to get three times the workload from a trainee than an experienced worker doesn't exactly strike me as brilliant. Oh fucking boy. I worked at both a low wild wings for a few years as a line cook. Two different stores. Same fucking pay. It was a type of work where you ask for a raise and they scoff and say yeah. Me too. Anyways. I had been pretty dead set on quitting sooner or later. Our kitchen was very small. Most people ended up closing 4 to 5 days a week with doubles on the weekends while still attending school full time as it was a college town. On Super Bowl fucking Sunday, a useless cowwalker who ducked out in the bathroom most the shift finally stops showing, and in response the managerial staff delegated closing to my pal Jay. Dude was a fucking delight to be around. Hands down the best cowwalker ever. Jay had told them that due to being a full time student, he no longer wanted to be first and last out, 4pm to 12am, 1am on the weekends. They basically told him to go fuck himself. 
and that they don't have any more shifts for him. Immediately, me and one other cook walked to the office and quit on the spot. Buffalo Wild Wings lost four cooks on Super Bowl Sunday, leaving them with seven full-time students on the schedule. It was a managerial shit show. I had a similar situation at Grease Monkey in high school. They kept scheduling me for three close. When I applied, I made it abundantly clear that I got out of school at 3 and would get there at 3.10. About week 2, the manager pulls me into the office and says you have been late every day. When I told him I have school, he said you need to decide what's important. I laughed as I thought he was kidding. He wasn't. I told him he could let me go if it wasn't going to work, but he begrudgingly let me stay on. He got fired for making anal sex jokes about a customer while she was in earshot. The new manager fucking hated me from day one. Since I got special treatment because I'm in school, I asked for a day off to go to Six Flags. About two weeks previous, the day comes and he calls me at about 9 and says, Co-worker, called in sick. Need you here. Now, I told him I was on my way to Denver with a group and that I asked for the day off. He huffed and yelled, grow the fuck up. Get here or you can come get your last check. I said I'll be there in an hour, and went to Six Flags, picked up my last check a couple weeks later, and was accused of stealing a coat. This was while you were under 18. There are strict laws surrounding that and your job interfering with school. Bold of you to assume shitty management cares about labor laws. The local movie theater in my town is notorious for overworking minors, all while gloriously paying 7.25 an hour. A call to your state's labor board will have hilarious results. I'm the manager of a retail store, and I had found out a cashier was back quote back quote stealing product by scamming reward card benefits. I came up with a detailed incident report to present to this employee, and I was under the assumption it was just her. After I confronted her in a reasonable manner she freaked out and got really angry and quit on the spot. She was using fake accounts instead of using a customer's reward card to get herself points and redeem them for product slash gift cards. So the customers weren't getting the points they are owed which is a headache for me if they notice and complain. The next day every other cashier called me and quit and after thinking WTF just happened I found out they were all in on it and were using this lady's fake card on their shifts too. So I'm down four cashiers and I have one left. This same day my last remaining cashier disappeared for 20 minutes. Turns out she was in the bathroom with another employee doing the nasty. She quits because her dad is a cop and doesn't want to find out she got fired for this. And she also asked me if she should go to urgent care because she didn't take her tampon out before they did it and she couldn't find it. The guy also quit because he back quote didn't care and was moving anyway. I was down to literally managers only. So the first part is the mass exodus and the last part was just for back quote can you believe this shit. People say wow unemployment is so high at 5%. I say, I can't believe 95% of you have jobs. Who the fuck is giving these people jobs? Daniel Tosh. Worked at a data company. The guys in the sales department fucked around all day. They'd literally be in the parking lot drinking beer and racing RC cars. When it came to handling accounts slash clients, they frequently gave away free accounts in order to retain customers and make their own sales numbers look good and somehow they got away with it. Meanwhile, there were dozens of programmers and database nerds working tirelessly behind the scenes to integrate a bunch of complicated data and make it easy to access via the website. Yearly holiday announcements come around, and upper management decides to send the entire sales team to Hawaii for an all-expense paid vacation. When the furious developers asked why they were just taking the sales team, the confused CEO literally said well, I mean, I guess we could ask the sales team to pick one person from each department who helped them the most this year and take them to the programmer slash engineers slash database people were livid and walked out in droves. Gee, I wonder why the company tanked. It's the same in every company. Sales makes money. Developers slash testers cost money. Transfer pricing is a godsend in that scenario. Your department posts good figures. Well accountings work for your department cost X. Admin cost X. Programming time cost X. Oh look, now those departments actually make a profit, and sales looks shit. Wonder why. Several years ago I worked in a mental health center. We worked primarily with kids. It was time for the center to renew their certification. Instead of keeping up with everything that needed to be done over the course of five years, the proper procedures were ignored. In this couple months before a certification, administration made us sit through a ridiculous amount of training on things that would have been covered in training such as HIPAA laws and identifying child abuse. 
a well-known colleague committed suicide and we were told by management via a brief side note in an email about stats at the end of the day. It caused a lot of upset in the office and quite a few people didn't return after this. Jesus. School district I sometimes sub, in had a background of hiring. A bunch of building substitutes applied for the jobs. And only about half of them got interviews. Of the subs that got interviews, myself included, the only one who made it past the screening interview, was a relative of a current employee. The rest of the subs weren't the right fit. The real reason is, that there's a substitute shortage and they don't want to lose any of us. Not a single sub, who isn't a relative, was hired for one of over a dozen teaching jobs. Many of the building subs aren't coming back next year. There's a sub shortage due to really low pay. My district requires subs to have a four-year degree. Then they pay $140 a day. So even if a sub was able to get a job every day they could only make 180 days $140, $25,200, and with no health insurance and no benefits. Fuck that. The rate was $60 to $80 a day in my area a few years ago. Insane. My district currently pays $100 a day. My state is also has one of the highest costs of living in the country. I'm pretty sure this is why we have so few subs. And why the subs we do have are mostly not very good. You have shit pay. You get shit people. P7. Piss poor pay precipitates piss poor performance. Worked at a Wendy's, and one of the regional managers started running a store, because they couldn't slash wouldn't find new managers, to replace the old ones. Well anyways this guy practically ran the place into the ground. Before he started running the store most everyone liked working there as it was a good environment. A few months after, a couple of people quit because of him. And one day I roll in at 9 to help open the store, and he comes out to my car, as soon as I park. I was 15 minutes early, and usually just sat in my car until 9, and tells me, hey I need to to start early, because the three openers just quit on me. We managed to get the store open, and had a number of people from other stores help, run the place until the people from the next shift came in. A couple days later I hear the full story, of what happened from a Kaoka. The regional manager is supposed to be at the store at 7 or so, and the openers 30 minutes later. He didn't actually show up until 8.30, so when the openers, already pissed at being at work really early, and not being on the clock, saw the regional manager roll in, and knew it was gonna be an awful shift or decided, that they were done with him, and just quit right there. So at least 6 people quit, because of him by the time I left the place, probably more left after me. Cancelled all raises and bonuses for everyone except the CEO, his wife, financial and ours, and his son, utterly useless it, in a year, where we have record profits, and brought in almost double the clients on top of announcing they aren't looking to hire more people, when we were already overwhelmed. Good part about it was when the majority of us quit they lost almost every single client shortly afterwards to their competitors and the company is now defunct. This feels really good to read. Company changed from 5 to 8 hour shifts to a 12 hour shift rotation. Lol fuck that by I I I I I. They decided after 6 years it was time to do a drug test, even lost the CEO in that great idea. The CEO reports to the board of directors. The board wanted to get rid of the CEO for cause. Everyone else was collateral. Many years ago in high school I worked at a movie theater. The place was pretty poorly run from the moment I started there. We never got paid on time and management was basically a bunch of lazy jackasses who sat in the office talking all day and never actually did any managing. It would have been hard for things to have gotten any worse. But after a couple of months they brought in new management who seemed to want to make it their personal mission to run the theater as poorly as possible. They first decided to implement a new policy requiring all projectionists to wear ties. Despite the fact that projectionists are never seen by the public. Not to mention that tiny little detail that the projectionists worked around giant, rapidly spinning objects that a tie could get caught in. Management refused to reconsider the policy and every single projectionist quit as a result. They then decided that the door people, of which I was one, who were always scheduled 7 days a week, would now only be scheduled on the weekends and refused to reassign any of us to concessions on the weekdays, so we wouldn't lose ours. As a result, almost every single door person quit, including me. After that they started imposing impossible cleanliness standards on concessions. Things like requiring them to scrape popcorn kernels out of the cracks and the trim behind the popcorn machines. Concessions was there until 5am every night trying to meet their standards. Most of the concession people quit as a result, 
By my count the theater went from a staff of about 50 to a staff of about 12 in 3 weeks. I swung by about a month after I quit and found out that entire management staff had been fired and replaced yet again by an entirely new one. Ones who actually seemed to be running the theater properly. My best guess is that the previous management had been told to whip the theater into shape and they were idiots who had no idea how to effectively do that. Or they were there simply to cut staff to be the bad guys. Now the new managers come in. Hire a bunch of people, but fewer than 30, and luck like winners to the 12 people that stayed. Maybe. Sometimes I get suspicious. Word slipped out, that the whole accounting department was being replaced, so they all resigned all at once. I had worked at a grocery store for about 3 years, before moving from courtesy clerk, basically bagger plus custodian, to help a clerk, stoker. The grocery department wanted to save costs on personnel but couldn't fire anyone, or lay anyone off due to the union. So they started cutting back hours, and literally told us when someone quits, everyone else will get more hours. Semicolon. We were supposed to be 40 hour employees, and they had us at 32 hours. Two people quit, and we were down to 24 hours. A third person quit, down to 16 hours. I don't know what their plan was, but they didn't give us more hours as people left. This almost sounds like they wanted a specific someone to quit, but didn't have cause to just dismiss them. That's the best theory I've heard. They called everyone into a major company meeting, and informed us we were all, except for sales and managers, being offshored to India and the Philippines. They had a plan for us training our replacements that, strangely, didn't account for pre-scheduled turnover. People started finding jobs literally the next week and the himahijing never stopped. Sounds like what Disney did with their its staff. Working at a local restaurant that had recently changed owners, multiple issues came up. Difficulty getting off for important things. Hiring people to work in kitchen who were bad at their job but cheap. Cheaper ingredients, etc. As well as owner just kinda sat around and drank while they're not doing much. Things were tense, and after a few months we were really just hanging in there cause we liked each other. Previous owners were a sweet old couple that set a great vibe. I know some others, and I were already looking for a job. Anyways there was a young mother who waited tables there and really needed the job. Couldn't afford to be between jobs. One night she got a call that her grandmother had a severe stroke, was unresponsive, and was not expected to make it through the night. She asked to get off and start her three hour drive to Dallas. Manager says of course, but the owner says no. Manager and owner got into a verbal fight in the back. The waitress ended up pleading her case, crying. Manager said that if the owner wouldn't let her go, he was done. Owner ended up firing them both on the spot. Within the next 15 minutes everyone who hadn't been recent hire ended up walking out of the building. Damn fat's cold, like Mr. Scrooge level cold, completely deserved the walk out, PM sent. The boss went off on a tirade on me for something that wasn't my fault, and I got him to scream people, like you are expendable pieces in this company and I can replace you tomorrow, if I wanted to. 80% of the engineers quit the next day, simply didn't show up, including me, from what I know. The entire project folded, because my now ex-boss, couldn't find people to replace us, because no one wanted to do the kind of work he was looking for at the salary he was paying. They reviewed the cameras back 3 months, to catch people coming in less than 3 minutes late, and have them all write-ups. Like 20 people walked out across the entire unit. 